Hello, everyone, and welcome to another of the Kissimmee Osceola County Chamber of Commerce weekly webcast. We're delighted to have another very important topic and guest this week. Uh, and before we transition to that, I just want to highlight uh, a big moment in Osceola County history. On Monday, we inked a deal as a county in, in uh, relation to Bridge at Neo City. We have a new private company partner in Skywater Technology Foundry. They're out of Minnesota, and uh, this is a great thing for the county and and uh, in, in our economy because it brings uh, high paying jobs and technology jobs into our county to sustain our efforts at New City. So congratulations to the county. Big news. So the topic this week, of course, uh, relates to uh, something that's very uh, beneficial. And so we wanted to address it and and bring in an expert to talk more about it. So we here at the Kissimmee Osceola County Chamber are champions for business and community. And this week we invite our champion, property appraiser, Katrina Scarborough, to join us. And when I say champion, uh, she's been uh, constantly uh, winning battles left and right for us, and she has a wealth of experience. She's uh, over 35 years in this line of work and in the agency, 12 years as its head, and just got reelected, which is a great thing, again, for our citizenry. We have someone we trust and know and who knows the job to carry it out to its fullest. So, We'll invite Katrina to the screen here for a conversation. Welcome, Katrina. Thank you for being with us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Outstanding. So uh, we've got a few things to talk about in the 15 minutes, but I uh, wanted to come out the gate with maybe a fun fact that you and I have been talking about. Uh, uh, your job's getting harder, mainly because you've got more things to track. And so I wanted folks to kind of recognize what that looks like uh, as far as our growth. Can you talk to that real quick? Sure. Um, Osceola County is the fifth fastest growing county in the country. That's not the state. That is in the country. Um, we're trying to verify if we've moved from that spot up or down. Um, we're having a little bit of difficulty. That's from 2019. But I don't think we've ventured far from that position if um, moving at all. Um, and we are the fastest growing county with a population of greater than 200,000. So from 2010 to 2019, we added over 100,000 residents, which is a 40 percent population growth compared to the U.S., which was only 6% that same time period. So it's, it's incredible. amazing. Yeah. It's what, I, what I remind my uh, new members during orientation is that you're, you're, you're at the right spot at the right time. There's some frustrations that come with that. You might have to sit at the traffic light a little longer till we get caught up in the infrastructures in place. But, but those are new folks coming in and their talents to contribute to our, our community and become our friends. And so it's just an exciting time. And uh, and, and we'll all decide our future. So we've got to work together on that. But uh, we're in a good spot. And, and the fact that so many people are coming in tells us we're in a good spot because they want to be a part of it, too. Right. Yes, they do. And I, as far as I know, they are continuing to come. Um, I think this is one of the most popular places to re relocate during the pandemic. Um, so I think that we're our population is increasing daily. That's right. And, and from all kinds, I know U-Haul featured us as the number two uh, self-move destination uh, for last year. So people who are doing it themselves, this is where they, they dropped off the truck and called home. So uh, and which means that likely these folks are buying homes. And so that's really the topic today is the homestead exemption. And we're going to talk about that in just a second. But with the audience uh, focus being business oriented, I wanted to talk about the tangible returns for business. Could you talk to us about the benefit there and making sure people are aware and take advantage of that? Sure. So um, all businesses are required to file a tangible return every year. It's a self-reporting uh, tax. And then um, we assess the equipment, your business assets, and then you receive a tax bill in November. Uh, the helpful thing is the more detail you give us, the better job that we can do. Um, we're, we want to do the best job and be the most fair with the assessments that we place on that business equipment. So the more detail that you have in those returns, the better off it is um, for us and helps us uh, do a better job. They have to be filed by April 1st and you can do it online. It's a pretty simple process. Uh, my staff is here if you have questions. Um, once you file your return, you will receive a $25,000 exemption right off the top. So most small businesses will end up not having a tax bill because their business assets are most likely going to be less than $25,000. Uh, but you do have to file that return first in order to receive that exemption. So they can do it themselves, but likely their accountant is on it. But definitely check with your accountant and make sure you take advantage of that. Uh, and so you mentioned a different timeline, April 1, than the homestead exemption, right? There's a different right. timeline for the homestead. So for the residences, the folks who just moved here, 
Uh, can we talk to, to them real quick about uh, what that looks like, why they want to do it, and if they contest their their ability on their appraisal report, want them to get the big picture here. Sure, sure. So right now is the time to file for any kind of exemption. That would be homestead, uh, seniors, uh, widow, widowers. Um, if you have a nonprofit and you've just purchased a piece of property, you just moved to a new building, um, you have to fill out an application to be exempt and um, supply some documentation. It's not automatic just because you purchased it. So uh, that would be for all nonprofits as well. So from January 1st to March 1st is time to file. Uh, you can do it online. The nonprofits do have to do it in the office um, or contact us and we can mail the application. Um, but it's a pretty simple process. It's about takes about seven minutes online. You answer a few questions and then the staff uh, will process the applications. You have to own the property and be living in it January 1st. Um, the same goes with the nonprofits. You have to own it. You have to be using the property even if you've just started and you're taking affirmative steps to using that property for a nonprofit, you can um, apply for the, uh, the exemption. So it's a very, very big um, uh, cost savings for uh, the average taxpayer. It's about $750 a year you save in taxes. But the biggest, um, in my opinion, the thing that helps the most is the cap. It keeps the cap down. Your, your value cannot increase more than 3%. Therefore, if you stay in your property for 10 years, 15 years, you're keeping your assessed value down. So it's not just that $750 a year thereabouts. It's the it's the savings of your value is not going to keep going up where the market does. It's going to keep your value down so that your taxes are down. So over the time, it could save you thousands of dollars on top of that $750 every year. Um, so it's a really great exemption. I try very hard to get the information out to all the new property owners. Every new sale receives a postcard. Um, if you're a business owner and you know someone who has just bought a home, please ask them, did they file for their homestead? Because um, it's really a great tax savings. Um, now, if you don't agree with any value that we've placed on the home, then you can file um, an appeal. The trim notices go out in August and it, that is a very important document. A lot of people will ignore it because it says, do not pay, this is not a bill. Um, but it's very important because it tells you what value I've placed on the property. This would be all properties, businesses and uh, residential. And then it also gives you what exemptions have been applied to your property. So at that time in August, you really need to reach out to the office if you don't agree with the value that we placed on that. And then we can actually um, explain to you how we've come up with that value and also walk you through the process if you disagree with the value. So just to stress that, you know, it's better to call you first, but if there's still some differences, then to seek the appeal process. Uh, and I, I do want to talk about portability just to mm -hmm. stress that because I'm a finance major. It's where my bachelor's degree is, but it still kind of gets me as to how all that works. So can you just revisit uh, the portability sure. issue if, if you move sure. from one home to another and whether it's in-state or, or uh, same, same, same state or not a same state? So portability is the ability to port the difference in value between the market value that I've placed on your property and the assessed value. And so we'll, we'll use um, easy numbers. You have a $200,000 value on a home, a market value, and your assessed value is 150,000. Um, the difference between the 200 and the 150 is 50,000. If you sell that home and you move to another home and you claim homestead, you can port that $50,000 and value and add it to uh, the value or it, it, it acts as another exemption, if you will. It decreases your taxable value so that you're taxed on less. So you can port it. It's within the county or within the state. You can't bring anything from out of the state of Florida because it doesn't exist. Well, mm -hmm. there may be some variation, mm -hmm. but if you move from another county to here, you can port that. And if you move from another home within the county, you can port it. You only have three years to do it. Uh, so there is a timeline and you can port as many times. So if you are one of those people that moves every five years, you can do it every time that you move. Um, it, there is no limit on that, but there is a three year time limit that just passed last year, um, given an extra year because it used to only be two years. Mm -hmm. There is an application. Um, if you file for Homestead Online, um, you will be asked certain questions and the way that you answer those questions will determine whether we feel that you may qualify for the portability or if you come into the office and apply, the staff will ask you um, to determine if you 
um, are able to apply for or eligible for the portability because we know the average property owner does not know it exists. Great. And, and uh, back to the appeals process, if they get to that point when, hey, I, I don't agree with the value because I didn't get my exemption included, if they don't make this deadline, there's little that can be done. That's why we're really stressing today, get this done now, correct? This can't be, the appeals process can't then grandfather an exemption on the deadline you missed here, right? Correct. The deadline's March 1st. Now there is um, there is the um, ability to file a late application. However, you have to declare why you're filing late and then we decide whether we grant it or not. Um, I tend to grant the late applications as long as the person has shown that they did live in the property and that they do qualify. Um, but yes, you can go to the appeal process. You're probably not going to win if you didn't make the deadline um, unless you have really an extenuating circumstance. But I will... I will do everything I can to help the average property owner get their exemption. Um, I fully believe that if you're entitled to it, then you should receive it. Um, but there, you know, statu there are statutory deadlines that sometimes I can't, I can't move. And uh, very quickly, there are some other exemptions too. I know veterans, uh, there's mm -hmm. been an increase there. We just voted on something this past uh, election cycle. Can you talk about some of those real quick for the benefit of our audience? Sure. There's the veterans. Um, there's the disabled veterans or surviving spouses. There's total and permanent disabled veterans. And then there's the deployed military. Um, the legislature tells us which deployments they're allowed to apply for. Um, you, all you need to do is if you think that you may qualify, please contact the office. Again, I um, can't stress how much I believe in helping you get the exemptions that you deserve. So if you think that you may be entitled to that, please contact the office. Um, there's the widows, widowers. Um, there is a blind persons. Um, there is a disability if you just have a, a disability. Um, and then there's a seniors exemption for the seniors. There is a um, an income limitation for the seniors. I think it's somewhere around 29,000, 30,000. Um, don't quote me on that. Um, but if you think that you may qualify for any of these, please contact the office so that we can help you. And, and that's key. Most people just cut that check once they bought the house and, and they don't think that this is real money in your pocket. And so uh, you can do a lot with $750 mm -hmm. uh, for your groceries and your car payments. So um, so this is real money. We want to connect you to it. Uh, and there's some other opportunities to get some money, too, especially for our businesses uh, through the, my, the we've opened safely .com. So uh, that's the grant money that came out of the CARES Act. The county's done a great job trying to get money in our, our residents' hands so that uh, you don't have the stresses of, of the COVID uh, pandemic around us here. So um, we want to lead you to We've Opened Safely. And for businesses who go there to fill out grants, they've improved it. Uh, an easier application process, more money. Even if you've got it before, if, if the additional money you qualify for, you can apply again to get that additional money. Uh, but now they link it to square footage. And so the best place to find the square footage of your business is, again, right here at our property appraiser's website. Do you want to talk about that real quick? Sure. So every property um, is listed on the website and it has the total square footage of the building. So if you own the whole building, you'll be able to get that fairly easy. You may have a little bit of difficulty if you're leasing a space from a building. But if you'll contact the office, we'll do everything we can to try to help you. We may be able to and we may not. But I'd, real, I'd rather try. I'd rather you reach out to us um, and give us the opportunity. We may have something that might be able to help you. Um, but go out to the website. All you have to do is type in the address. And when you scroll down, it will give you the square footage of the building. And so in the last minute here, we'll talk about COVID itself. So uh, the impact on property values uh, it really has an impact on them. They're still increasing or holding steady. So I don't want people to be surprised by that. Can you talk about uh, the relation of covid to both property values and your operations, how people get a hold of your staff. Sure. So we are charged with assessing property as of January 1. That's based on the previous year. So the bill that just went out in November was based on January 1 of 2020, which was 2019 prior to the, the pandemic. So we're now working on 2021. So we will be looking at what has happened in 2020. Residential, I don't see any decrease at all. The, the property values um, are not going down. The sales are still going up. Uh, I don't see a decrease at all. Commercial, we're still analyzing. Um, I just sat through some continuing ed last week where 
Um, obviously, the hotel motels are being um, impacted because of tourism. So we have to take a look at that impact. Restaurants, um, possibly. Um, I have talked to a handful of people who have office space. And, and um, right now, it seems that, that they're being maintained, um, that there's not a whole lot of vacancy. But again, I've only talked to one or two. We've not, we've not had a chance to analyze. So um, it's still a little early for me to say, hey, the commercial property values are going to go down. Um, I'm just not quite sure that that's going to happen, but I promise that we will look at all the data and do everything that we can to take everything into consideration. If you as a property owner and a business owner have information that you think will help us, um, please reach out. You can contact myself and I'll get you with the proper staff um, to talk to. But um, right now I'm not seeing a huge impact other than with the hotels. And that's obviously attributed to the tourism um, mm -hmm. again, but I ask for any information out there in the real world. Um, we can look at all the statistics we want, but I'd rather talk to property owners that, that have been impacted because mm -hmm. you know our community is um, impacted greatly. I think we have the highest unemployment. Um, I think most of that's to the tourism, of course, um, but we wanna make sure that we're doing our job and that we're treating everybody fairly and equitably in, in the values with what's going on. Well, 15 minutes goes quick. In fact, we've abused it. We're at 16 and a half. So uh, I want to thank you, especially your attention to our tourism industry and, and providing some relief. They are having difficult times and those tax bills are still due. They want to pay them, but uh, we're just in a very difficult situation now. So any relief there is appreciated uh, so that we can sustain that important industry. For those in the industry, we have great tools and uh, skills, skill training to be able to still get you back to work and, uh, so regardless across the board, I want to stress to the audience that, that Madam uh, Property Appraiser is, is the best in the business. Uh, she obviously cares and wants to hear from you. So we encourage you to contact her direct uh, and to get this help that's just there waiting for you. It's, uh, it's, it, it's money that is yours. So, uh, and she's the best to help you find out how to get it. So thank you, Madam Property Appraiser, for being with us today. And uh, thank the audience for watching. We'll see you next week. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.